Hello everyone and welcome to the Not Awareness Campaign. My name is Bradley and I'm the director and founder of Not Spirit. This is my business partner, Sister Mandy. We are a super yacht recruitment company that specializes in yachts over 50 meters. We have decided to run this campaign to raise awareness and hopefully provide the yachting industry with really useful tips and tricks across all crew departments. We will run these videos on the first of each month throughout the season. We hope you find them informative as well as being fun and also that you will gain something valuable in order for you to enhance your progress in the yachting industry. Wish you all the best for the upcoming season and good luck. Hi everyone, as Brad said, my name is Mandy and I would like to introduce our first guests for the June campaign, the fabulous Gustav Fischer and Cal Bester. Gustav is an international celebrity hairstylist and Cal is an editorial makeup artist with celebrity clientele. Today they will be giving you girls and guys some useful tips and tricks on how to present yourself for CV photos and general appearance whilst on board. We all know how important it is to take good care of your appearance. Presentation and appearance is really everything. I will now hand over to Gustav to take you through it. As men, we always want to look natural, but going for an interview, there's certain things we have to do to make sure we meet the mark. Your future employer wants to make sure you've made effort going to your interview. Make sure your hair's not on your face. Either tuck it behind the ear or put in a ponytail if you've got longer hair. With product use, make sure your hair is clean at all times. Don't use products like a heavy gel that will make your hair look greasy or untidy. Remember, you should look like your best version at all times. So looking at Cameron's hair today is he's got really good quality hair. One that is perfect ready to go for a beach or a night out, but this is not quite appropriate for your interview with your future employer. What I would recommend as a hairstylist is getting a paddle brush like this and using this to kind of help you mold and blow dry your hair into place. The first thing that I would say is, is the hair needs to be out of the face. Your employer wants to see your face and know that you take pride in taking care of what you look like. Starting off by the hair, when we've damped it down, use the paddle brush or vent brush to kind of smooth the hair down to get it into shape and then finish the hair off by using good quality products to hold the hair into place without making the hair greasy or leaving it looking dirty. Once you've wet the hair down or just out of the shower with your shampoo, make sure you brush the hair through completely to make sure you get the hair to sit into place. Positioning the hair to where you need it is absolutely key because once you put the heat on it, it will set the hair in that position. This will guarantee your hairstyle stays in place the whole day to avoid that kind of messy out of bed look. With Cameron's hair, the hair is quite long through the front. So what we want to do is we want to maintain the hair off the face by brushing the hair down and using product in the hair. Now at this stage, you can use something like a light holding spray, like a volumizing or texturizing spray that will set the hair into this. Now, one of the things that I a pet hate of mine is men's hair that looks really stiff. So you want to use something that's gonna give you hold, but yet move and lightness through the hair. You don't want to give you something that's making you look really gelled back, as that also doesn't give quite the right impression for your future employer. So what I've done is I've brushed all the hair down backwards. I've made sure that the hair is all behind the ear because that's the way we want to have it set. I'm gonna use a slight holding spray. Um, this is like a thickening spray and all it's gonna give, it's just gonna give a little bit of a hold through the hair. And I'm gonna make sure I brush that through to make sure we get that hold. Now you can do it to a side. I think personally that will look a little bit more modern. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hair dryer. So starting up by a high heat and a low speed, we're gonna brush the hair from the front to the back while applying heat all the way through. And we're gonna do this till all the hair is dry. So once we've finished blow drying the hair, we want to make sure that the hair still has nice movement through it. 
I like to use a finishing feed and what this does is it gives you a strong hold but with a natural finish. If you are gonna have too much in your hand, you want to rather start at the back than the front. So avoid at all times, just do this first. Make sure you kind of work the hair either from the sides or from the back first. So as we finish Cameron's hair now, he can still have his hands through his hair and it looks soft and still masculine, natural, but yet professional. And these are the things we want to implement every time before we go for an interview. Make sure the hair looks groomed, but not overstyled. Product, but not too much to make your hair greasy. The great thing about men is they don't really need to do a lot of concealing. If anything, they can use a concealer uh, for blemishes. Uh, sometimes you can get a bit of a nick or a graze uh, or an ingrown hair, which might need disguising. So a little bit of concealer, just touching and a little bit of powder if you want it to stay. The main thing I think in terms of male grooming is tiny nose hairs can be really distracting. So grabbing a little trimmer and just erasing the nose hairs is a nice detail and it gets rid of any distracting hairs for someone to look at while they're speaking to you. Another thing that I would say in terms of male grooming uh, is fragrance. It's everyone wants to be uh, pleasant in scent, but it can be really distracting if it walks into a room before you do. The best scents and the one that someone will pay most attention to you for is something that is green in its scent, so something almost like rain. Um, people are more likely to listen to you if you smell fresh. If you uh, enjoy a deeper fragrance, I would advise to spray on your wrists. When you spray it on your uh, collar, your nose becomes desensitized to the smell and that's why you continue to spray it because you're trying to catch up with the smell, but everyone else can still smell it. Uh, so less is definitely more. As a female going for an interview, make sure you always keep your look quite natural. Keep the things that's visible to your interview up neat and tidy. For example, make sure you keep the hairline clean, non-frizzy and smooth at all times. Reason being is that this is the things your employer will see firstly and that's the thing that will give you the illusion that you've made an effort and really present with your interview. Looking at my lovely model Jess's hair, a few things that we can definitely take a look at. She has got gorgeous hair and doesn't need loads of work. But what we definitely want to do is we want to give her a little bit more of a polished look that will be perfect for that five-star service that she will providing people on the yacht. So first things first is you want to open up the face. Now, if we look at Jess's hairline, I'm gonna turn you this way, you'll see there's quite a few kinks in the hair. These are the few things that point out if you've actually made an effort for your interview. Make sure that the hairline is always done perfectly, either by blow drying it or straightening it with straightening irons. If we look at through the front, we want to make sure that the hair is off the face. You can either pull the hair back in a half up, half down, of course, once again, the hairline is neat and tidy, or bringing the hair up completely to create a really classic and elegant updo. You want to be friendly, but sophisticated at all times. Starting off our look, I focus on the most important bit of the hairstyle, and this is the hairline. Make sure your hairline's always smooth and perfect. Start off by sectioning the hair from just behind the ear to make sure you get all the hairline in. Make sure you place the brush in and put a lot of pressure on the hair to really smooth out that frizzy or curliness. Once you've finished with your blow dry, and the, if the hair is absolutely perfect, then you're good to go for your next step. If the hairline is not perfect yet, use a straightening iron like a GHD to really smooth out the last bit of frizz to make sure we lock in that perfect look for your interview. One of the key things for an interview or successful interview is making sure people can see your beautiful face. Make sure the hair is always clean, tucked away. You don't want hair that's gonna be overpowering, so keep the hair really simple, but also really approachable, but stylish at all times. Starting off by placing the hair either in a center or a side parting, make sure that the parting is clean and neat at all time. This is one of the things that always looks super, super good because it makes sure that you've got attention to detail. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the hair behind the ear and I'm gonna twist it all the way to the back. What I'm gonna do at the back, I'm gonna take an elastic 
and tie the ends up. This will give you more security in the hairstyle and also it will help you do your own hair much easier. By holding the hair, I'm gonna pull a little few pieces out just to soften the twist. And then pin the hair into place. Now I'm gonna do the, the exact same thing on the opposite side. Once we're here, we want to kind of tie the ends away. So clip the clip in, wrap the hair around, and stick it underneath. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna support that clip by crisscrossing it, which I will show you in a sec how to do, to make sure that the hair stays in place all day. If you're out in the sun, on deck, or just out and it stays perfectly intact. Once we've secured the hair through the back, what we want to do is we want to make sure that that hairline once again looks absolutely immaculate. So taking a hairspray and spraying the hairspray on your hand, a light mist, and then just gently rubbing it and pressing it into the hairline. Now that I've finished with my first look, the half up, half down, you can see the result. It gives you a clean, friendly, approachable look that can take you through to any yacht or any clientele to service them and give them your best attention at all times. Today we have the lovely Jess here and she has some amazing features which we're just going to enhance as that will make most people feel more comfortable anyway. Starting with a clean face which has been freshly cleansed, I would start by mixing equal parts uh, moisturiser with something that's illuminating to the skin. This will create a really subtle glow but also create hydration which I think when we're often when we're outside in the sun we forget that we can become a little bit dry. So just giving a little bit of hydration to the skin and adding the illuminator will keep that um, kind of glossy finish to the skin. What I would say is um, less is more. So if it looks really metallic, I would probably steer clear from it as that can be quite distracting and you want to look like you're nice and fresh. You don't want to look like a disco ball. If you have some uh, minor blemishes or discoloration in the skin, you can pick up something like a concealer or a tinted moisturizer and just focus on the areas which need a bit of masking. I would choose lighter textures if opting for a full foundation because you can always build your concealer up in terms of coverage. The main places I would disguise are the center of the face. So when we think of our eyes and we have discoloration, it generally starts in the point uh, closest to the bridge of the nose. So just taking a little bit of concealer and dotting it through there and blending out will really just brighten that area. So I think sometimes you, you have a lot of choice when it comes to eyeshadows and you can get quite overwhelmed with everything. I would stick to either one or two in terms of colors. Uh, something kind of pearlescent or um, champagne-y works really nicely on most skin tones. Uh, if you're deeper, go for something that looks more like a chocolate. If you want to add a little bit more, most people will have an eyeshadow that has four parts and instead of getting so kind of overwhelmed in the fact that there are four colors, I would just stick to two. So your lighter color and your um, deeper color towards the lash line. You can use fingertips or you can use a brush and just start in the center of the eye. So you can kind of pat it on. If you prefer a brush, something like a fluffy dome brush works really nicely. So starting from the lash line, just pack the color in, more like a pressing motion. And then if you want to blend, it's windscreen wiper motions towards the crease. It gives a little bit of iridescence and light towards the eye. And it's mainly where you will see most of the shadow is right from the lash line towards the crease. If you have hooded eyes, it might uh, start to go down. So if you are one to create a lot of definition around here and your eye comes down a little bit, you're gonna lose it all. The best way is to just kind of stick to one color and blend it out. And then if you wanted to add a little bit of definition, 
something like an eyeliner, um, black or brown, brown is softer. If you're fairer, I'd probably go with brown, although black is quite standard. So what I would do is taking the edge of the pen, I would tattoo more like dots, dotting motions. Nice and close to the lash line, open eyes for me. And then I would take a really small brush or a cotton tip if, you're, if you don't have a load of brushes, you can also use a cotton tip. And all I'm gonna do is really lightly smudge the lash line. I wouldn't really go any heavier than that, otherwise it looks too full on. So from here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of mascara. If you are working around water, a waterproof mascara is advisable. You might not be one to dive in, but the water will spray up and kind of um, humidity can wear it down a little bit. Focus on the outsides if you have a liner on, just because it creates a nice feline finish. From here, I wouldn't really do much else to the eyes. I'd probably just define the eyebrows, just keep them nice and lifted. If you have sparseness, or your brows are really fair, or if they're dark and they have a sparseness, you can grab an um, eyebrow pencil in a shade lighter than your actual brows. This way it doesn't create a really distracting caterpillar effect sitting on your face. So I would go a shade lighter than your brow shade just to keep it soft. And the way that I would tailor a brow is kind of ignore what's happening in here unless you need to do any fixing in the center. What you want to do is lift the eye and if you look on the edge of the iris, that's where your point uh, should begin. And sometimes just due to natural shape or um, plucking, it can be a little bit bare in this little area here. So strengthen it starting from the base of the brow and just building that up and just bring it up and out. Check if it's too shiny from this point. Um, shiny places where, places where it should not be shiny are the center of the forehead, along the bridge of the nose and the uh, chin, and then in these spots here. This can be quite distracting or it just makes you look a little bit oily like you haven't paid attention. Take a small brush and then keeping this really nice kind of glow on the outside. It feels quite youthful and really fresh. So this is personal choice from here on in. Uh, if you'd like to wear blusher, you can. If you do not like to wear blusher, something like a uh, bronzer or an illuminator works really nice on lifting uh, complexion and giving it a finish. Again, try to opt for textures that are not too glistening uh, or too shimmery on the skin because they're quite distracting. Grab a little bit on your brush, tap off the excess on the back of your hand so that you're not going in straight away with a lot of product and then Never smile when you're trying to find your uh, apple of the cheek because you will create lines in here which powder settles into. So when you relax, you will see um, more texture sitting on your complexion. It also, this part raises when you smile and drops when you stop smiling. So you essentially will bring your apple all the way down here, which ages you. You can take the tragus of your ear and come straight forward and that's generally where your apple will sit. If you do not have high cheekbones like Jess, what you can do is use your thumb to find your cheekbone and by pressing in and then round it. So it's almost like you're hooking your thumb in and then rounding and it's this point here, it's like a pillow. So just sweep across, across and up. Just keeps it nice and lifted. And then we've got that really nice glow that we had uh, previously from our skincare sitting on the face. So from here, really, unless you are one to wear red lipstick and you are completely confident in wearing it, I would opt for neutral tones. Um, matte lipsticks wear better in terms of longevity, uh, but if you are not one to wear lipstick but still want to look polished, you can choose a more sheer texture. It is comfortable uh, and it just feels uh, a little bit less like you've uh, put something on. So I've just gone in with a lip balm first uh, because we've got quite a matte finish. You can leave it just like this, it's quite nice and polished, but if you like a little bit more color and you want to uh, feel a bit more uh, done, then something similar to your blush tone works really nicely. You can do it with fingertips, you can do it with a brush. You can dab your finger 
over the colour until it's kind of married together with the edges of your lip line. So that is our complete look. Uh, it's really, it doesn't have to be too difficult. You can put it together in roughly five to 10 minutes tops. As long as you feel comfortable wearing it, you will always uh, look confident. Uh, the main thing to think about is high shine in the center. So just pat it down with a little bit of powder and keep that nice glow uh, through the cheek to keep you looking nice and youthful. And you've got enough definition in the eyes uh, that people will look at you without being distracted. And then in terms of lip, again, just feel comfortable wearing it. If you do not feel comfortable in a red, always opt for a neutral. And that's it, perfect. Thanks to Gustav and Kel. We hope you found that helpful. Please feel free to leave your comments below. We would love to hear your feedback. Be sure to tune into the next video campaign. On the 1st of July, we will be focusing on general crew etiquette. See you guys then.